first drift that alarmingly in the betting was, you know, fancy in the morning to continue to drift. It was late on the on the exchanges to, to lose. It was something you'd see in a, in a Dick Francis novel, Charles Bond. The ground is soft. It's not. It's, no, it's not, heavy. Soft on time. So it's it's, it's heavy. heavy. Okay. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Boss Stewards Inquiry Sunday Sermon. Recording earlier today, uh, pre-recorded, so I didn't accept any questions, but we've got plenty to go out in this show. And with me chewing the fat for this episode is John Ling of John Joe's Blogspot. John, hello chewing, and welcome. Chewing raw meat, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> I feel in full-on, absolutely exasperated rant mode. I, I think we need to let them have it today. Yeah, I, this is, I mean, this is just very, very naughty. Before we get on to the full rant mode, um, we'll start off with the the uh, Jimmy Lindley uh, column. We'll finish with the Jimmy Lindley follower at the end of this of this of this cast. But just to mention Wannies yesterday. Uh, for India, Indian Jim got this uh, well stuffed, but caught the stewards' attention at Newbury, and it managed to pull harder than Callum Best yesterday, and still uh, uh, hack up at Ascot yesterday, John. Flipped the farm round nicely with the winner, didn't it? Yeah. Um, the thing is, sad thing for me is I didn't have a bet on it, and I was because I, I was just a bit worried what they were going to do. It, it, I thought if this wins, does this show Jim up a little bit? You know that kind of thing. Yeah. Did they want to show Jim up or what? Or what? Obviously, Charlie hates him. Um, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. So, so like, but I mean, so but anyway, I waited for him running and thought, well, you know, can can we have like a, a decent little betting running? But I said it just apps. It wouldn't. It wouldn't drop the bit. It was absolutely rabid. And I just thought, well, you, you just you've just got to watch this. And then my heart sank as it as it came through and. And did the I'm thinking, geez, you know, you, you, anyway, anyway, it's how it was. Did you, did you have a betting race or did you bother? No, no, I mean, we, some of the man said to yourself, actually, I thought, well, will the show Jim up to the extent that this will show him up if it causes up here? And, you know, I just don't know, I'll sit it out. I mean, we did we did say on on Friday's show, you know, so we and that's why I'm not even claiming it as a as a, as a winner or a, you know, sometimes I, I'd highlight it. On the on the Twitter feed, if if we thought we'd done good or something, but I, I'm not even going to highlight it because obviously on Friday's show we but we were we were fence sitting, we got we got we got splinters up our ass, um, into, and 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 it reflected in what we did. We didn't we didn't have a bet um, ourselves, but if you did get on, because you probably some of you might not listen to Friday's show, but listen to the to the cast where we mentioned it. Uh, well done. Um, at least it's a horse going forwards that you can keep your eye on because it's probably capable of better because I said it did pull very hard yesterday. And the, the talking points yesterday, John, firm ground at Haddock. I, I mean, I, this 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 last 10 years of my life is, is so weird. Um, and, you know, in terms of what's gone off with, with everything in life it's to do with betting everything, you know, being told what to do by everybody. Um, and Kirkland yesterday, I mean, and this week, I mean, yeah, I mean, did he just do it for Starman, John? Yes. I hesitate, yeah. I hesitate to say, yeah, th- this wasn't for the good of racing. Mm. Because if it was, that's what he'd have been doing all season. Yeah. This was purely to get his star man on the pitch. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, it, it's all right praising him to the skies. You know, let's see what happens at the next day of that meeting. Or let's see what happens elsewhere. You know, th- this is like spitting in a bucket as regards difference it's going to make to anybody you know mm. and unless there's wholesale changes we, we're going to be back to normal tomorrow morning you know well you know, i mean it proved it proved yesterday and we 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 had one dissenter on the on the twi- twitter feed um sort of stating and you know that well he, he didn't like it because um they were they were breaking course records they were they were um, they were biased races all from the front, but which would we prefer? Where you can bet a horse knowing full well what conditions it wants and it's going to get them, or do we want where they've put water on and it 
the the quick ground horse that you've had a good good bet on, you know, throughout the day, all of a sudden becomes more disadvantaged because they put more on them, or 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 it's it, it's not took it as well as what the probably the Clark Clark wanted. You know, what what are we wanting, John, as punters? Well, I would ask the dissenter what he wants. You know, I mean, does he want a watered track where, say, 40 to 50 percent of the cards are right off because you've got to watch one on the straight course at least, you've got to watch one on the round course at least before you can strike it back with any sort of confidence? At least if you know it's good to firm, unwatered, long standing biases will stand, you know. I mean, I'd much rather go to Beverly knowing that first maiden race with the kilt got a 72 poke in. I'd, I'd like to know for a fact I can have 200 quid on that and get out at two to one after a furlong. Yeah. Do you know? I, yeah. I mean, that's thing. That's thing though. Do, do we think that? I mean, I, I've I've thought for a while that 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 there must be. Some, I, this is me being conspiracy theory, but, but bookmakers again. It come, comes back to bookmakers and, and and larger larger bookmakers. They they don't want they don't want fast ground. They don't want consistent consistent ground for horses to run on. They 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 would they would like on the old weather. They'd like the track harrowed now and again, you know, to to shove the results into an absolute quant, you know, harrowed deep so you get a slower surface or a quicker surface. They like they like over watering just so it upsets all the all the all the the form balance. I can't come with any other logical conclusion. Though, though there was there was trainers withdrawing the horses Saturday at Haydock. Um, you know, it's quite a few. Well, I wouldn't say a lot of non runners, but you know, there was a few. And you know, to me, is is that is that trainers that that have been are trainers controlling the ground or is it bookmakers? That's what I'm trying to say. Someone is. It, it, where where has this come from? Like Nick Davis said, in the last ten years. Uh, the going sticks have just dro- have dropped through the floor. And yes, and I think there was nine point something here, Doc Friday. And it was like, wow, what's this? Nine point something, nine? You know, only Bath only Bath goes above nine. Um, and it's, it's you know, what, what? where do you see it? Who, is it? Is it a combination of everything? Is it bookmakers? Could it be good bookmakers and trainers? Is it trainers? Or is it just Clarks? I don't know. Well, Clarks respond to trainers. And- yeah. Trainers are habitually full of shit. <laughs> it's as simple as that, you know. Mm. I mean, Gosden's one of the biggest culprits in the run up to a big race, rattling yeah. up about the ground, you know. I mean, I've lost count of the times before he's won at Cambridgeshire. He's been stressing that this won't run if it's rattling fast or this won't run if it's too soft, you know. And, and tra- trainers influence them. And clerks shouldn't be influenced by trainers. They should be influenced by proper, hard and sharp guidelines from the BHA. But the BHA won't get their arms around it because it's not seen as their problem. And they've got a gross profit to deal with the bookmakers and, of course, rattling fast ground. I mean, you, you can go to York in August if they haven't watered and it's rattling quick. You can just back the top two time for rated. You don't even need to put the put the work in you'll come away with more money than you go yeah it, it's it, it's true right? I, I mean i mean my father was a bookmaker when i was a teenager and he always used to moan like during the summer months because literally when it stayed quick ground the form was pretty much you know punters had it easy for sort of took a couple of months a year no long in fact i would say the summer months are getting towards the hardest because like I say, with all the watering, and we've seen the effects, particularly this year, it's had where meetings have even been called off because they've chucked too much on, they've had the downpours, and then they've had to abandon. And that's the ridiculous scenario we've had this summer to deal with as punters. And yet, I, I thought it was such a refreshing change. It was like the old days again, you know, like where you know for a fact you've got you need a firm, you need a fast ground horse. You need you can't back anything that isn't fast ground and. I'm sick of looking for tracks in a summer where I'm looking for soft ground horses. It's ridiculous. Um, so refreshing change. Um, and to any dissenters that think that the ADOC was rubbish Friday and Saturday because it was fast, well, I, I don't know. In some respects, I think you're in the wrong game because if you want overwatered slop um, to, to work your bets out, then 
then I, I, I don't know. It, it, it doesn't fit my narrative anyway. Anyway, uh, so Kirkland there with a shock, the shocker. Um, before we move on to the rest of the show, uh, myself and John are pretty keen on one anti-post um, for a race um, in a few weeks, the Cambridgeshire. And I'm quite astounded um, to see the price that it is. And it might seem a bit obvious, um, but I, I I think if anyone fancies taking the eight to one Uncle Bryn for the Cambridgeshire, I've seen a lot worse bets, John. Yeah, I mean, this thing was hugely impressive in its comeback run after... Uh... Wait, well, he's given it the summer off, hasn't he, really? And, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it started the year as a... Well, I, I honestly thought it was going to be his derby horse. And yeah. he took the preferred route. It went and ran in the Dante, ran no sort of race, really. Um, it's had the knackers off. Um, you, you couldn't fault the comeback run. It's clearly got stamina aplenty. You know, I mean, it... It's bred to get a man a quarter plus. So, I mean, you've no worries about a nine furlong Cambridge. Uh, he can be ridden handy, which, again, is a huge plus in the Cambridge. There's not many come from mid to back of the field. Um, you'd say he'd probably handle most ground. I don't think there's an awful lot to worry about. Gosden will talk very loudly and very clearly about his preferred ground. <laughs> on the run up to the race and I'm sure he'll get it um, I think this this is definitely a horse with potential going forward off its current mark and I'm a bit surprised that there's 8 to 1 still available yeah I mean I, mean, I, I really think this I'm not saying this is a Lord North because uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm not but Lord North obviously went off very heavily backed on the day um, this horse's profile to me suggests he's very, very smart. I mean, the, the two wins on the all weather in the winter um, were, were very, very smart. And you could clearly think that th- they thought this was potentially a Derby horse. Yeah, for sure. And it's clear, obviously, he's had his mind on other things because, you know, that he came back in a. I can remember him at Epsom. He, he absolutely pulled his. He, Frankie just couldn't hold him, really. I didn't like the ride at Epsom that Frankie gave him either in the in the Blue Ribbon Derby trial. Um, yeah. And 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 you could see then he was he was a bit of a boyer. And watching him come back, he, you know, he, he was like an old sheep on the front uh, when Frankie just said popped him out. Now, him trying to make all over a mile at Ascot, I don't think, even though he had it all his own way, I don't think that's his barrow. I yeah. think he would love to be sat sort of fourth, like you just said, sat nice and nice and handy, or just just sort of mid-pack to handy, getting a lead off a strong pace. I think a mile and one, I just think the horse will just find another seven to ten. I mean, this horse really should be group three stroke, Group two standard, I'd have thought. Um, that's what I felt about him last winter, and and obviously with the gelding and he's come back and done that. I, I, and you could see with the interview with Frankie afterwards that the Cambridge has always been the plan because straight away Frankie when when the when the the, the interviewer said you know what about the what about this plans plans next you know would you be thinking Cambridge and straight away Frankie went yeah you've got to as if to, as if to say. This was always the this was always the plan, and as I said, it, it just lo- and it's a valuable pot. Um, like like Frankie rightly points out, it's worth a lot more than most um, group races if you're not going into Group One. Um, so yeah, why not? And I, I just think you know, if on the day, providing there's not no sp- specific biases or whatever, I don't think you're going to see anywhere near eight to one. This I think you're probably looking. I could see sort of three to one, seven to two with the books, maybe 5.5 on the machine. So if you want to nip in, I, me and John both recommend a bar steward special ah. anti-purse bet. And and I would say win only because you don't forget, you're not, you're not getting the, the full benefit of the place terms that bookmakers offer. I would just go on the button um, eight to one because it, it, what's the point in taking quarter first four when on the day you'll get idiots like Skybet and whoever else going one fifth the odds first eight or first nine you know it's you you may as well just i think on the button no messing about 
you know, we, we don't bother with each way. Um, straight on the button, Uncle Bryn for the Cambridgeshire. So hopefully that'll be nice uh, to send you into the later autumn races with your pot bouncing. Uh, we didn't do bad on the tipping yesterday, actually. Um, uh, yourself, John, with Chalk Stream and Andy in particular had a great day yesterday. Um, you know, mentioning um, quite a... Quite a, quite a nice couple of winners. So, yeah, it wasn't too bad, the tip-in yesterday, apart from Hookham knackering knacker the blogger up, John. The blogger yesterday. What with what with his, um, with his big double for Betbull, Hookham and um, Starman. That went well in uh, Dubrovnik. Well, I mean, I've sort of put up with his bullshit for most of the season and seen it as a little bit of a laugh, to be honest, but I thought it took a bit of a sinister turn this yesterday. I mean, uh, putting that up as a double, I mean, come on. Yeah, you know, and he's got all this, you know, we're living our best life, let's do this, and all, all this shite. <laughs> Which it is, it's shite. Yeah. I mean, where does he work? You know, who's funding all this? He's not doing it through betting because he's shite. <laughs> Let's be fair, you know. So, I mean, what's going on here? Who's he encouraging to lump on these doubles, you know, and lump on the big race favourites? The only people to benefit from somebody advising followers to lump on these type of high-profile favourites are bookmakers because it's the first thing they want in their book. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I saw you were a bit upset with him yesterday. Um, but yeah, I mean, to be honest, I had it off a couple of sources yesterday where they'd messaged me and said, "Have you seen this idiot?" So I played, I played the video, and the the thing I'd say is, I think in a way it's a kind of an abuse of your social media power because obviously he's got a lot of followers, he's got a lot of people that that like what he does, and to be honest, there are some good things he promotes. Um, in terms, when he was doing that thing for France, I enjoyed, you know, like when he was. Um, in, interviewing trainers, jockeys, um, just showing his life in the sort of French uh, arenas. That kind of, kind of enjoyed those. But when it's become sort of obviously he's working for bookmakers, um, and then you you basically sat, you know, uh, halfway across Europe. You've done zero work into the cards. You've you've you know, and you've come up with you know a double that basically anyone with a you know could just pick out just i just i just think it's it's wrong really and like you say that's where you've it's your abuse of power because obviously there'll be folks that probably i know weirdly will probably follow him religiously um he's got this thing now where he's, he's putting three races up and saying anybody can give quote the tweet and anybody that can pick the three winners I will pay you, I don't know, a monkey or 250 quid. And yesterday, some, somebody trapped it anyway. They got the three winners. I hope to Christ they had a Trixie or something like that because they got a damn sight man and they're stinking 250 quid. But I put up on that. I said, if you're paying this out of your own pocket, I said, I'll suck the stallion off. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. I mean, what the hell is going on? He started to drum up more followers, and then more followers equals more bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, it, there's some good things. I mean, this is my perspective on him. There's some good things that he, he does do, um, and without a doubt, I mean, I do find some of the videos entertaining with, with him and the stallion as well. Um, but the, the, there are certain aspects that do concern me and you know we're all we're all on about responsible gambling these days and this brings us on to um, our next topic um and this one topic that has just incensed me as as, as the last 10 like i said earlier it's the last 10 years of my life I, I am completely incensed with how life is going um uh, 10 years ago life felt fantastic uh, I'm not so sure life does at the moment, and that's not just because of the of the of the pandemic and the restrictions brought about through that. But it seems that everyone in life wants to tell everyone how to live, what to do. Um, you should be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. And 
the article in the Times today was from um, uh, about uh, Paddy Power Betfair. And um, basically, if you're not aware, um, they are now going to introduce a £500 monthly cap on losses for younger customers as the betting industry battles to prove he's doing enough to protect problem gamblers. Um, Conor Grant, head of the UK and Ireland for Flutter, said the £500 limit was not a target, but a backstop. Um, there's a very fine balance for us in providing the safety net and dictating what customers can and can't do with their money, he said. Now, this is, I would say, probably the biggest red flag for the industry that's now about to fall flat on its face. The, the problem with doing this and putting an age on it, um, so if you're not, if, you, if you're 26, you do what, you, basically you can do what you want. If you're 25, you can't. It's a bit like, a, I suppose it's like a, you could say it's an 18, you can drink, 17, you can't. Um, but the problem with this is, uh, obviously, it, it's a big generalisation. It's You're not putting alcohol in your body. It literally is you... Some 24-year-olds are successful people, have a lot of disposable income. Some 24-year-olds don't. So for start, for starters, it's ageist. But where I have a massive problem is that you've got absolute total Tom Munts like Peter Shilton that have done their absolute bollocks in their life, heading campaigns to promote safer gambling when all he's done basically he's just a shit punter he's done his brains because he's just shit um and you know you get absolute arse bandits like him that are now destroying if you like the industry and well if you you the dream now is now finished to be able to make money betting so so i can remember me as a young 18 year old 21 year old learning the learning the ropes doing doing my trade losing money trying to work out how to make it pay um that's that's done it's finished because it doesn't matter now it doesn't matter if you if you put for, a, a typical example here put 500 pound into betfair then if you're under 25 under these rules let's say you win let's say you have a fantastic three or four months and you turn it into five grand right so then the fifth month comes along you do 500 in because you have a pretty bad couple of days or whatever you can't then bet for another month You've lost, you've lost 500. So you're stuck there with 4,500 in Betfair, but you can't bet because you've lost 500 pounds in that in that calendar month that, that when it resets. So 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 therefore, we're talking. This is absolutely. I I, I just I, I I've I've had enough with everything. It literally is. The the who's who's this to protect? I mean, the the, the amount of problem gamblers in in horse racing are very very few. It literally is. It's, it's so minute. The stats have been done on that. It's it's admitted that it's slot machines. So why are a supposed betting company on on sports and racing, you know, m- making sure that no one can 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 bet on the sport? In effect, well, once they've done the five hundred quid in, that's it. You're done for a month. Thoughts, John? I couldn't agree more with what you're saying, in all honesty. I mean, I think it's the thin end of a really, really naughty wedge. You know, I mean, uh, it's it's not right. These, these firms are just responding and trying to put measures there sort of ticking the box for me. You know, I mean, uh, gambling is the new tobacco and government seem to be it's a case of the tail wagging the dog as regards the gambling commission they're they're getting involved because it, it's an easy win you know the no racing will roll over for any lobby group or faction so they, they can put it on their cv that they've cleaned up racing and then they don't give a monkeys about the mess that they're leaving or the mess that they're turning the sport into you know it's just it's, it's rotten. It's absolutely rotten. And there's nobody actually talking any common sense. Nobody with any clout that's going to do anything about it. You know? Well, it's like most things in life at the moment. There is no common sense. It literally is who shouts the loudest 
and the workery, the, 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 the you know, the, the, everyone wants to tell how other people how to live. Everyone wants to tell people what to do and what you should be doing. And the GC have come in, basically, and under their rules, which are very flaky, um, well, they're not flaky as in the, the, they're there, but they give bookmakers ultimate power to do whatever they want under the guise of problem gambling. It's in the, if you read the rules, and not many people do because they can't be asked, I've read them word for word. And what it says is that bookmakers must do, in the terms of their life, to keep their license, they must um, perform av- affordability checks and uh, account restrictions where needed. But but it's so broad a stroke, where needed. Well, it's like saying, well, you know, <laughs> well, I, th- what we need is the Gambling Commission actually getting off their arses and auditing every single account restriction and why. There's been so many accounts restricted unnecessarily. There's been so, you know, but, but the Gambling Commission don't care because they can go back to the government and say, look, uh, we've we've reduced we've reduced uh, problem gambling at, uh, accounts by whatever percent. It's all numbers to them. They don't care. They don't care about the industry. They have got no vested interest. In fact, if their salaries were on a vested interest that was linked to the profitability of of, of horse racing and uh, and everything else, you know, they wouldn't be implementing these measures. They, they've just got a remit to, to limit the amount of gambling harm. And they've given bookmakers full license, full and un, 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 unopposed license to do whatever they want. And this is the latest from Workery Flutter, Paddy Power Betfair, to put a £500 cap on young young uh, gentlemen, ladies, whatever uh, you identify as these days, um, you know, to that, that kind of monetary limit. Despite, you know... Why? You know, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, I am. I'm just lost for words. I'm lost for words about how society and life is going in general. Um, what are they coming for next? I presume it might be alcohol. Will it be? Will it be fast foods? You know, what? What is it? What is it? It'll Telling be it next because the, this, to me, all leads towards moving towards a cashless society. Yeah. Where then they have got you by the bollocks because basically you will get to 65 and they will know what you've spent. And if you've spent plenty on gambling, tobacco, booze, they'll be saying, look, I'm sorry, son, you haven't really looked after yourself. I looked after your money. No pension for you. And that's the way it's going. You, you're going to have to justify everything you've done in life. That's that's the end game to all this, and it's it's very worrying. The thing is, on on the board of the gambling commission, it literally is full of um, people from of different expertise from different backgrounds. Um, you know, it could be I've, I've I've read all the bios of some of them, and and I mean, yeah, look, the one thing they've all got in common is they're all very well educated. Um, they've all had a, they've all had a great education, a great background, obviously they're not coming from the poorer echelons of society. They, they, they're coming from the, from the, uh, you know, the, the, the Eaton, uh, certain Sander side of society. Um, but, but, but that's, that's more or less it. And I, and I, and I would wager that probably half of them on that board have never had a bet and wouldn't know what, what, you know, it, it's, why is there no punter representation on anything? The BHA set up this horse betters forum, who, who, who are like a chocolate fire guard. And to be honest, it might not be their fault. That might be harsh on them because basically the the BHA, they, like you said before on previous casts, they don't care about punters. Punters are just there to pay for them and to and to. But you know what's funny at the moment is. The BHA, Sleepy Hollow, they're the new time form. You know, they're just they're just sat there, and they have no power over the gambling commission or what's being done. I accept that, but they they just sleepwalking into the industry being absolutely capitulated, and under the power uh, of the major bookmakers, which are just gaining more and more power. It's like a hurricane, building up, building up, building up, and the more and more power they get. I mean, I, I personally think, like Jeff Banks said um, on a, on the previous uh, excellent podcast we did with him, and he said that he could see the end of Betfair. You know, he's, he's pretty confident, and I, like as in the exchange. And I'm pretty certain that that's the way it's going to go because the account restrictions, um, and uh, you know, 
the £500 a month, well, there's going to be no field money coming into the machine. I mean, if you if 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 the under twenty five loses five hundred pound, even if he's even if he's a long term winner, but if he's lost five hundred pound in that calendar month when it starts counting from, then he can't play he can't play for a month. So that's that's another that's more money that can't go into the exchange or anywhere else. That, I mean, I just uh, please I, 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 listeners, I want you to get in touch um, regarding this issue on Twitter, YouTube, whatever, create some debate because. The, it, I I I see no future for the for the sport at all. I, I, I for myself everything. Um, I mean I'm cast aside here because basically if Betfair dies, then again, where am I going to get on India? It's, it's all prohibition. They, 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 they haven't learned since prohibition. The more you restrict, the more you stop people from doing it. And un- unlicensed bookmakers will start surfacing again, John, in pubs, in in you know like it used to be where we'll, there used to be. A, we'll, all, we'll all be betting with the leg breakers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it, in the US, it's thirty percent on, on takeout on the tour, um, and obviously there's unlicensed bookmakers in America because the, the tour takeout so high. Bet with your bookmaker, get what you want on. Don't affect the tour price. You know, the more you place restrictions on gamblers, the more they're going to go to India. Um, the more you'll you'll start betting in the Far East where there's no uh, regulation. You can do that now. You know, there's ways now I could sign up for a, to a Far Eastern concern. You know, obviously you're under a bit of risk with your money, but, you know, as I said, it's that's the way you can go. And that's the way other folk might choose to go if they can't get their fix or they can't um, get their bets on. And I think we're in very dangerous times and very, people, very worrying times. The people that's organising this know that that's where it's heading as well. Oh, yeah. And, and people who are betting with the leg breakers, the far east, all the rest of it, as you say, they're not guaranteed to get paid out. But the people at the Gambling Commission, the people at the BHA, the people in government, I mean, we've got a snivelling nincompope as a chancellor, otherwise he'd have been all over this. They do not care. Not one of them. No, no. It's uh, it's very worrying. So please get in touch via via Twitter, via YouTube on the subject because it's subject close to my heart, and I don't want to see the industry die, which it currently is and will do, uh, under these uh, latest measures uh, proposed by Flutter article in the Sunday Times today. Right, we'll move on uh, uh, before we give the Jimmy Lindley horse of the week that, that uh, John uh, alerted to me, and I completely agreed. Um, just quick, quick message about Fat Gordon, John. I didn't like the Racing Post article, like sort of like fanfare and him back. Disgusting. Yeah. Um, there was two tweets there that particularly got my goat. The one, the first one quoted him as saying about um, the low point was seeing these wonderful horses go, you know. And I countered by saying that the low point should have been him realising that he's as thick as mince for being photographed sitting astride a dead horse. And he's bloody lucky to be still making a living out of the game. And and the other one, again, it was something akin to poor me, I sauce these horses and blah, blah, blah. It just really makes me sick, you know. I mean, if the Post has to write about Elliot coming back, why don't they say, you know, coming back here with his tail between his legs and a lot to prove about arse welfare? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm I'm waiting for the next article on uh, Charles Burns, the legend of the gamble, uh, uh, coming back when his his, uh, little suspension's over and done with. I mean, it's it's just, racing is just... uh, the, the the like you said, the media's inadequate. It's been inadequate for a long time. There are no quality journalists left. Um it's left to basically what I would call inexperienced um uh, stroke. Um they, they they like towing the party line. They like you know, it's the only sport in the world where you're just not able to criticize anyone and it's it's a smoke blowing exercise for many and it's it's quite sickening to see. I, as soon as I saw the headline, I was quite shocked. Surely he should have just quietly they should have done done the trainer change so Gordon Elliott's back instead of snoozy. Um and you know, 
and just left it at that. No fanfare, no, you know, poor, I mean, woe, woe is me, you know. We know he's going to come back with a bang and a load of winners as well. Oh, Smith yeah. Been absolutely shit, hasn't she? Let's be fair about that. Yeah. You know, oh, I mean, she's got £10 off everything. Yeah, it's it's all by design. Um, so like I said, <laughs> that's it. Use it to your financial advantage. Follow some Elliot runners. Uh, maybe when he's when he's back in the uh, uh, hot seat. Um, right, we'll move on to the Jimmy Lynn leg just to end the show. Um, and we spotted one yesterday. Well, John did. Well, well, we both did because we both played on the race. And it was John. John messaged me and he says, "Christ," he said. He said, "I've seen one here." He, he said, I've, I've just bet one. He says, that's like, it's the dirtiest stop job. And yeah, um, I played in the race myself, so I, I suffered. Um, I'll let you lead in with it, John, the race in question. Well, I actually put this up on the blog yesterday as a solid h way bet. Yeah. And I, I'm pretty close to my maximum on this h way so... Feel free, listeners, if you think this is pure pocket talk, have a look at the race and let me know. But this was hypersonical in the 250 at Thirsk. Um, I'd seen plenty of promise in the debut at Haydock. It got knocked sideways coming out the stalls. It was greener than the Jolly Green Giant in the race. Yeah. Um, he hardly knew how to gallop properly. It was having trouble get, getting on the right lane all the way around the bend and everything. Everything pointed to a typical Carl Burke improver second time up. I thought the race was eminently winnable, and I really could not have three horses in that race beating it. So, hence the the big H way tonk that I, that I took at it, and Mike Raven had half a hand in short, having it so short in the betting, to be honest. Um, and then, really, I just couldn't believe what I saw. PJ sat there like a pudding, no, no attempt to get closer down the back when everything tells you you need to be nice and handy over seven at Thirsk. He, he let the gap get bigger round the bend, he sat, he sat there as I was sat in the toilet, in all honesty, virtually inert. And then straightening up, there was a little bit of arm shaking goes on. I've seen more from Frankie Vaughan when he was doing a cabaret. <laughs> um, just absolutely ridiculous and then what i could not understand was there was nothing from the stewards room you've got a heavily back second favorite it's finished stone last the jockeys hardly moved the muscle and not a single question asked completely agree um as i played in the race and much to my detriment um and like i said i, mean, I, I take lose on the chin it's part part and parcel of the game but hypersonical was yeah, it was. I don't know what the reason was, or why, why it would have been like that. But yeah, it wasn't. It you wasn't. Know, it wasn't busy. If, if there was something wrong with the arse on the race, the jockey felt something. You know, fair enough. But why wouldn't he report that to the stewards? Yeah, I think it was. It, for me, it was his early position where he didn't want to get involved. Um, he yeah. just he just didn't want to, any part of because obviously he, the main rivals were O'Herbert's Rain, which won the race, Killern of of Charles Hills. They were the two market rivals, and Yellow Bear of Declan Carroll's that was fourth in that led. Um, Killern was sort of sat on the outside in about third. O'Herbert's Rain was alongside that, and then you'd got sort of four or five lengths back to Hypersonical. Who, who, if you watched him out of the, the traps, Hypersonic will come out fairly well, come out yeah. okay. But there was no interest from PJ to hold that or, or to just make sure he was on the heels of the leaders. He was quite happy to sit six or seven lengths further back very quickly. And I think that was the telling sign. Unless, like you said, there was something wrong with the horse in the early stages and he felt that. Yeah, you, you know, I mean, I'll bet you're off. Then, fair, then fair, fair enough. You know, but why wouldn't you tell the stewards if that was the case? You know. Yeah. Well, more to my chagrin was why the stewards didn't ask a question. You know, I mean, surely to God, a, a second favourite running like that merits a question. Finishing last, yeah. Yeah, no, poor from the stewards. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I uh, hope, well, me and John both hope you've enjoyed the show today. Uh, lots of talking points, certainly. And one very po- negative one for me in terms of the uh, 
Paddy Power Betfair. They get the plank of the week um, for, for introducing or soon to be introducing 500 pound limits. Anyway, this week ahead, we have got um, a Tuesday St. Ledger preview special. Uh, so don't miss that. That will be uh, online probably around, I would say, somewhere in the region of half seven, eight pm, um, covering the whole ledger meeting. Oh, Myself, my favourite trainer's got a hard on over this meeting, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, we're me and John might tailor it around a specific trainer, but you'll have to wait on Tuesday to find out. Regular listeners of the show probably guess. Um, but anyway, uh, so we'll be on. We'll be back on Tuesday with uh, me, John, Quentin Franks, Andy Richmond. Uh, and then on Friday, we've got the Ginger Hitler, um, super West Ham fan, Nick Davis, um, uh, tremendous handicap judge, and myself and John obviously joining those two. Uh, so two cracking shows coming up uh, this week, so don't miss them. And uh, please uh, f- f- fill your talking points on Twitter and on YouTube. Let's get the debate going about these ridiculous moves from Paddy Power and Betfair. That's all from me and John. Um, hope the rest of your Sunday goes really well. Bye for now.